this is where I first learned to put skimmers. This is where I did all my training. <laughs> and I spent a lot of nights here um, just learning, taking apart the pump. How quickly could you install a skimmer? On a good day, like 30 seconds, maybe. 30, 30, seconds. 30 40 seconds, yeah. That quick? Yeah, yeah, it's fast. <laughs> How did you find your targets? So what I do is I go on Google Maps, I just type in gas stations, and I'll zoom in to see where, well, what the face looks like, what the door looks like, what the gas pump look, model is. I would access the, the, the gas station pump with a universal key. So it pretty much collect anywhere from 750 to 1,000 um, card numbers. What was your best day out? My best days, because it took me like three days, I made 30 grand. Skimming costs financial institutions and U.S. consumers more than a billion dollars each year. When we started researching, looking into skimming, which is when people steal money from credit cards and debit cards, we decided, who would know about this? Who's investigating this? Well, it turns out it's the U.S. Secret Service. So this is an example of probably the most advanced skimmers that we're seeing today. It, these are magnets that actually help hold it in. So a lot of ATMs, the uh, card readers are like this. And these magnets actually hold it inside the device. Investigators here are dissecting the latest skimming devices. In this particular case, there's a small pinhole on this piece of plastic that would normally sit just like this on the ATM machine and would capture the keypad. A couple months, everything would be quiet, and then the cyber criminals will find a way around it. And then there'll be a new spike until we get it stopped. So it's constantly the cat and mouse game uh, to find ways to prevent it. Skimmers are now targeting an especially vulnerable group. Currently, I am on government assistant. Sung Hee Lee, a college student in Boston, is among the 41 million Americans who rely on the Federal Supplemental Nutrition Assistance Program, or SNAP. So you were literally at the grocery store checkout counter and found out all your money was gone? All of it. Like, only had 40 cents left in the account. They wiped you out? Yeah. So it was a large amount of money that was charged in Illinois. In Illinois. Where you hadn't been there. At a Sam's Club. I don't even have a Sam's Club membership. I can't afford a Sam's Club membership. The U.S. Department of Agriculture, which oversees the federal SNAP program, tells us it does not track how much money is stolen. So we asked all 50 states, but only a few could tell us. 2.9 million stolen in Massachusetts, impacting more than 6,700 households. 7 million in both New York and California, with New York taking in more than 10,000 complaints of skimming. The reason SNAP cards are easy to hack is because of the magnetic stripe, a security measure that dates back to the 1970s. It's wide open, so you can use any reader to pull that information, and that's going to give the personal information, the card information, and of course, uh, some other details. It doesn't make any sense that the SNAP program, which spends $157 billion annually, is using a glorified hotel room key to provide benefits to the food insecure. Fraud experts at LexisNexis Risk Solutions found that every $1 skimmed ends up costing nearly $4, a loss that's passed on to every taxpayer. I would tell the USDA, we don't need a new, unique, innovative solution to solve the problem. We just need some very basic controls. One feature that he says would help is the chip more secure than just a magnetic stripe. Stores that started accepting chip cards back in 2015 saw in the first three years a 76% drop in fraud. Lawmakers from multiple states have sent letters urging the USDA to take aggressive action, saying it hasn't updated cybersecurity standards for the nation's food assistance program since 2010. This is a broader problem that eventually ripples across society. Yeah, it 100% affects taxpayers, um, and it is a substantial amount of loss. So we asked for months, but the USDA declined our request for an interview. They did send us an email saying that they are holding roundtables to explore modernization opportunities, but didn't give any timeline. One possible solution the USDA is testing, a pilot program that will roll out in five states next year. It allows people who get food assistance to try tap to pay. It's a good security move the Secret Service says we might all want to consider. We talk about tap to pay, very convenient, safer? So I think tap to pay as well as paying via your phone is a very safe way to do it. After getting caught and spending more than two years in federal prison, Michael Perez is now teaching law enforcement and business owners how to stop skimmers. But before the law caught up with him, his conscience did. A moment of clarity 
in the aftermath of a hurricane. People were checking into hotels because they didn't have any homes, everything was destroyed. And I was there doing that damage to them. And I remember the person in front of me, card got declined. And she didn't have a way to stay at the hotel at that moment. That's when that hit me. Do you feel like you have a new life? Oh yeah, yeah, I feel like I can sleep at night good now, you know? It feels great, like I feel like I don't have to look over my shoulder anymore. I still can't believe it, you know, that I got that chance. Late last year, Congress passed the SNAP Theft Protection Act, which allows the USDA to refund SNAP recipients whose cards were skimmed. All 50 states applied, but so far the agency has only approved funding for eight of them. Amasha Qureshi, CBS News.